Hi. First of all, I want to thank all of you for attending. I want to especially thank our veterans um, who are here, um, and I hope that um, this recognition this evening will help you feel appreciated. I know you don't always feel that way. My husband's a veteran, so I know firsthand. Um, the, what we're going to do this evening is the food is now being brought out. You're welcome to come up and, and help yourself, and um, they'll be su serving food uh, throughout the evening. Um, we have uh, Jason from Veterans Inc. He's going to say a few words about where the money that we're raising tonight, where it will go, and any toiletries that you might have brought in with you. Um, we also have Representative Frost, Senator Moore, um, who have come with a citation from the governor, and they will be um, presenting it to Bill, um, who's the manager here of the American Legion. Um, just a couple words about Rotary, a, a lot of people don't know what Rotary is. It's, a, it's an international humanitarian organization. It was established in 1905. Um, and there are 34,000 clubs throughout the world consisting of 1.2 million Rotarians. And our motto is service above self. Um, we meet on Wednesday evenings. We're currently meeting at J. Anthony's restaurant. And uh, what we do is we basically raise money and give it away. So um, if you have an interest and would like to give back to the community, if you know of somebody who has uh, as an interest, who has time. Um, I want to especially thank, I have a couple, I have a member here from the Shrewsbury Club, so, um, and there'll be more uh, Rotarians from that club joining us, so thank you. Um, and Rotarians, we, we help each other and uh, we help the world uh, locally and at large. Um, one of the things that our club has done is um, since we Kind of, we're trying to regrow the club. It's a 70-year-old club. We started last February to try to breathe some new life into it. At our pancake breakfast, we gave $3,000 in scholarships to three deserving Auburn seniors. We uh, sent two uh, Auburn sophomores to the RILA, which is the Rotary, Loop, Rotary Youth Leadership Award, and they spent a weekend at, uh, this year it was at Worcester State, um, learning uh, how to become good leaders of the community. We purchased a telescope that we haven't, not many people know about yet. It's been delivered to the Auburn Library here, and this is a refractory telescope. You'll be able to go in, take it out, borrow it like you would a book, um, it's very user friendly. It comes with instructions and a little guidebook so you can spend some time looking at the stars. Um, we have the dinner tonight and uh, the next thing we're doing is we are uh, doing a district grant. There's a, a park that the original club in 1970 uh, established it behind the fire station. It's called the Goddard Park. I don't know if any of you know where it is. It's behind this fire station, in between the fire station and the library. And what we're doing is we're replacing the benches, we're putting in a picnic table, um, and a trash receptacle. Um, and we have a future, we have a 10-year plan with that. We would eventually like to build a bridge that would cross that waterway there so that people could go from the library to the Goddard Park. Um, because I think eventually the fire station things might change there. So um, it's a great organization. Like I said, we meet every week. We're at J. Anthony's. Um, if you know of somebody, um, if you know of somebody that would like to partner with us to do a specific fundraiser, just let us know. So um, I think what I'll do is I think I'll start with um, Jason. If you want to talk a little bit about Veterans Inc., and then I'll go ahead and introduce um, our senator and our, our representative, and we can get that done, and then you know, then we'll move on. There'll be people coming in and out. There are uh, raffle tickets. 
we always have raffles. Um, the tickets are two tickets for $5, five tickets for $10, and we'll be drawing those tickets um, at the end of the evening. So if you aren't going to be here, make sure we have your telephone number so we can call you. Thanks. <laughs> Thank you, Marsha. Good evening, everybody. My name is Jason Pallich. I am the uh, Public Affairs Specialist for Veterans, Inc. I'm really excited to be here tonight because I also happen to be a Rotarian in Shrewsbury. Uh, so a member of the Rotary Club of Shrewsbury, myself and our uh, co-presidents, Judy Merriman and Julie Parent, uh, will be along shortly, a uh, long-time Rotarian experience. Uh, and actually, here they are. Here they Give them a round of applause. Hey. 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 Good timing. But uh, anyway, I just wanted to tell you all a little bit about Veterans Inc. Many of you are familiar with our organization, but for those of you who aren't, I'll tell you a little bit about who we are, what we do, where we came from. Uh, Veterans Inc. is a 501c3 nonprofit currently in its 25th year of operation. Uh, and its sole focus is to be a supportive services agency for veterans in need and their families across New England. Over the life of the agency, we've helped about 60,000 veterans and veteran family members in need we provide a wide array of services. Where the agency got started, some of you may know us by our headquarters. It's the former Massachusetts National Guard building at the end of Grove Street in Worcester, often affectionately referred to as the Veterans Shelter. How the agency got started was in 1990, a group of Vietnam veterans in Worcester banded together, uh, a little bit distressed by the problem of veteran homelessness that they were seeing all around them, decided that they wanted to do something about it. So in 1990, they convinced the Commonwealth to deed over to them the Mass National Guard Armory. At that time, the building had been abandoned for about 20 years, and the state turned the facility over to the group of veterans for the price of $1, although unfortunately, it needed about $250,000 worth of work in order to be habitable. So the group got to work raising money. They started collecting spare change outside of grocery stores and department stores all across Worcester County in ammunition cans and overturned combat helmets, eventually raising the $250,000 needed to rehab the building, which in January 1992 opened up as the nine-bed Central Massachusetts Shelter for Homeless Veterans. As it became apparent that the need across the region was more significant than that, the agency continued to grow, adding along with those shelter beds supportive services like mental health and substance abuse counseling job training, uh, help writing resumes, connections to employers looking to hire veterans. Uh, in 1994, Veterans Inc. became the first program in the United States to open up a separate shelter facility for homeless female veterans. Uh, that program is still in operation today, though now it's on Sheridan Street in Worcester, where it is now an 18-bed program for female veterans to live together with any dependent children that they might be responsible for. But Veterans Inc. continued to grow over the years. Uh, that same building that was the nine-bed shelter in 92 is still our headquarters today, although today it is an 85-bed shelter. And on the other side of the building is the administrative offices for a program uh, that now is in all six New England states. So we're in Maine, New Hampshire, Vermont, and, uh, Rhode Island, Connecticut, helping about 3,000 veterans each year. Most of the veterans we serve are in some state of need but are not homeless. We do a lot of outreach work, a lot of homeless prevention work. Uh, we will do employment and training counseling everywhere. We're doing a lot of referrals for mental health and substance abuse counseling. We're also there to help veterans who might be at risk of homelessness. Uh, an example of that is if you have a veteran or a veteran family member who's stably housed, working, holding down a job, uh, but they have a car payment or an unexpected medical bill that's come up that they are worried it might ruin them. Veterans Inc. is able to step in and pay a third-party provider if it's going to keep that veteran stably housed. The full range of services that we do includes transportation to and from VA medical appointments, which is obviously a big deal in New England where a lot of the major VA facilities are not necessarily accessible by public transportation. We will work with veterans to connect skills that they may have received uh, in the service with potential employers who are looking to hire for jobs who fit that role. Uh, the need, unfortunately, continues to grow. The military right now is in drawdown. Usually there's about 300,000 new veterans nationwide each year. That number is going to be much higher for the next few years as the military continues to draw down. We're seeing a whole generation of new veterans who are having to cope with post-traumatic stress, who are having to cope with TBI, traumatic brain injury, uh, in, a, in an economy that's still not quite as strong as it should be. So Veterans Inc. is committed to being there for our veterans in need. Uh, we operate a 1-800 number. If anybody knows of any veteran or veteran family member who might be in need, you can call that number anytime. It's 1-800-482-2565, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. 
We'll connect them with whatever services they need. And our facility on Grove Street in Worcester is also open 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Uh, I just really want to say thank you because Veterans Inc. as a private charitable organization is able to do what we're able to do only with the support of strong community partners. We have a lot of support from the business community, the Home Depot, TJ Maxx companies are big corporate supporters of ours. We also have a lot of generous private foundations, but it's really community groups like Rotary and like Lions Clubs that consistently think of our veterans, the veterans we serve, that enable us really to continue to provide these services. I know that uh, Judy and Julian Marshall are interested in getting the Rotary Clubs in the area working together on a project to benefit the veterans served by Veterans Inc. Right now we have a real serious need for personal care items. Uh, and I'll a special note on that, people often think of Veterans Inc. for clothing and personal care items for men. People often don't think of us enough for women and children. As I mentioned, we do serve female veterans and their children as well. Uh, so we have a real need for that and I'm just really uh, pleased to see you know, in Shrewsbury over the past weekend, and I know that we have some more personal care donation items coming, it seems like it's been a big success. So with that, I just want to say thank you to everybody. We appreciate all the work you're doing in support of our veterans. Thank you, Jason. Um, Representative Frost and Senator Board, would you please sure. come up and would you like Bill to Sure. Come on, Bill. <laughs> uh, I think it would be uh, Greg Granger, our commander. Yeah, if Commander Granger wants to come up, sure. Absolutely. That'd be great. <laughs> well, I'm Representative Paul Frost. Uh, I'm from right here at Auburn. And let me first by say thank you to to all our veterans uh, for your service to our country and to our community. Thank you very much, and God bless you all. And of course, thank you. Yep, go ahead. Let's apply to our veterans, please. Uh, I also want to uh, recognize uh, all those who are currently serving our great country. Uh, without their service and sacrifice, our nation would not be the nation it is today. Uh, and we thank them for their continued service to our nation. Uh, and whether our veterans and those currently serving us have have uh, faced combat or have gone and uh, served our nation during conflict or have even answered the call to a, a natural disaster somewhere else in the world to provide humanitarian aid, uh, our military is the best because we have the best people and we have to support that always. And I know you here, the veterans here realize that. You gotta take care of them when they come off the battlefield. You gotta take care of them while they're on the battlefield. And of course, I know you all do a great job, especially here at the Tunnel Post, of remembering all our veterans who have passed. They keep their memories alive, their stories alive, and their sacrifice alive for all of us. So thank you so very much. Thank you to the Auburn Rotary Club for hosting this, for honoring our veterans. Thank you so much, and I, I hope you do well. And, and, uh, uh, continuing to grow here in the town of Auburn, who has had a great tradition for 70 years to kind of keep that tradition going, and I thank you for that. And I, and I do hope that you continue to grow and, and keep up the great work you do here in our community, and to Veterans Inc. as well for, for the great work that they do here in our region. So thank you very much. I'll introduce our state senator, Michael Moore, and then we have a presentation. Uh, we'll just give the, the resolution to uh, Commander Granger. It's a resolution from Governor Charlie Baker and Lieutenant Governor Karen Polito. Uh, honoring Veterans Day. Senator? Uh, first of all, thank you all for coming and taking the time out of your day to be here for this. And again, I want to thank the Rotary uh, for doing this and the American Legion for, us, for being part of this. Um, can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. No. Um, no? <laughs> um, being the son of a, um, a World War II and Korean War veteran, um, I can tell you I appreciate the sacrifices that all of you have made and your families have made. Uh, you would think by this point in time that the fighting of wars would be uh, from, from the Civil War to the uh, First World War to the Second World War to the Vietnam, Korean War, that to the, very, the Gulf Wars that, you know, we would have learned by now that it's, it's, um, it's time to move on from that type of that type of philosophy, uh, that we should be able to, that countries and pe people should be able to get along and work out their differences. 
but sad to say, we have more conflicts every day that are opening up. And if you think about um, right now, every day, people are, are veterans, men and women, uh, who will be veterans, but uh, sacrifice, making sacrifices every day in their families, they're overseas right now fighting. I think a lot of us at times forget that. We're so um, involved in our daily lives, and I don't think we see the impact that people are going through right now, that years ago, when you had the Vietnam War, the news every night highlighted it. You had to see the, the tragedy, the, the suffering going on. And today, you've got the HBOs, the movies, and everything else that entertains people that takes you away from the sacrifices that are being made. And I think what's important is that we don't forget. I know that's a, that's a phrase that everyone throws around that we can't forget, but we really can't. Because every day there is someone that's putting their life on the line for us and making that sacrifice. Uh, tomorrow I'm actually going to a bridge dedication in Northridge for Corporal Dawson, who, um, who died last year. Um, so that, there are people over there dying right now. We hear, you know, we hear about what's going on in the Middle East with ISIS, and like, well, that's, that's far away. But it comes home very quickly. As soon as when it's a family member or someone in, in, your, in your neighborhood or your town that makes that sacrifice, it, it, I think that's when it really hits home. So again, I want to thank you all for being here. Um, there is there's never enough recognition, I think, that we can get, give our veterans for what they have for what they have done for us. Um, and as Representative Frost said, we have a resolution from the governor. Read it over. Okay. We have um, okay. right, um, we have a proclamation from the governor. Whereas since the Commonwealth's colonial days, thousands of men and women have served our country in defense of freedom and liberty. And whereas on November 11th, 1918, the armistice was signed by the Allied Nations in Germany ending World War I, the war to end all wars after four years of conflict. And whereas since that day, every November, people from around the nation have gathered to honor our veterans. And whereas currently there are approximately 380 8,000 veterans living in Massachusetts. And whereas today we are reminded of the great sacrifices and contributions our veterans have made to our country and... And whereas we honor and salute those who have served our country throughout the generations with honor, patriotism, and courage. And whereas it is appropriate that all Massachusetts citizens remember the bravery of those who served their country so that their dedication and sacrifices serve as a reminder of the cost of our freedom. Now, therefore, I, Charles D. Baker, Governor of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, dear, do hereby proclaim Wednesday, November 11th, 2015, to be Veterans Day, and urge all citizens of the Commonwealth to take cognizance of this event and participate fittingly in its observance. Given at the Executive Chamber in Boston, the first day of November in the year 2015, in the independence of the United States of America, the 239th. His Excellency Charles D. Baker, Governor of the Commonwealth, Karen E. Polito, Lieutenant Governor of the Commonwealth, and signed by the Secretary of the Commonwealth, William Francis Galvin. God save the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, and God bless America. Thank you all. Coming by, I know you're schedules are busy um, this time. Again, thank you everybody that's here. Um, we have a lot of raffle prizes up here. So um, what we're going to do is you'll just, um, we're not raffling off specific items. You just buy your raffle tickets, put your uh, copy in the in the picture there, and we'll just draw and we'll start with the with the biggest one and work our way down. But there's scratch tickets, there are gift certificates, gift cards, Home Depot, Dunkin' Donuts, J. Anthony's Restaurant, um, and something else in there, and then some other items. So take a look and, and um, there will be around to sell tickets. So if we want to start, I think, let's start with the table over there and come on up and start getting your food. And, and uh, bon appetit. <laughs>